from Ke Fred Kelly Stadium on the campus of El Medina. It's tonight's presentation of the Game of the Week featuring the visiting your Belinda against the Orange Panthers. Hi, everybody. I'm Richard Stray along with Bob Gibson. High above the visiting sideline here at Fred Kelly Stadium. We're happy you joined us for tonight's contest. Bob, what a game this was last year. 50-43. to 43. We were so tired at the end of that game. Uh, I expect nothing less tonight. Well, it was the immediate game of the year a year ago. I don't think anybody could argue that uh, at all. We thought it was going to come down to the very end. Of course, it did. Almost the last possession uh, took the game. But, uh, yeah, you're right. We're expecting another one because a lot of those same names that you heard us talk about a year ago, they're back on the field this year. Hey, players and coaches don't expect any less. Let's <laughs> go down to the field with John Conti. He, uh, he has an interview. Coach, P Coach Pedroza. Hey, Dan DeForest here with Prep Sports Media. We're with Coach uh, Bedrosian. Can you tell us a little bit about what we should be looking for tonight in the game? Uh, I think you'll see a great game tonight. Obviously, we're playing a very quality opponent, a uh, very good football team. Uh, had a close game last year, which was a fun, exciting game, and uh, we look forward to the same type of game tonight. Do you feel like it's going to be another high-scoring battle? Um, it could be. I mean, I, I hope it's not too, too high-scoring. Uh, for our defense sake, but um, I could see there's a lot of playmakers on their side, a lot on our side, so I think it should be a fun game, uh, and there could be a lot of scoring for sure. Who are some of the players we should be watching out for on your offense? Uh, on our offense, you can look at our quarterback, Hype Grand, uh, running back, Kobe Boykin, uh, a couple of receivers, Jonathan Smith, and Central Wise should uh, lead the way tonight for us on the offensive side. What about on the defense? Uh, defense side, we're anchored, uh, you know, obviously by Jonathan Smith at the defensive end, and uh, our Juan Morris at the middle backer, and uh, you know, Jalen Lightfoot and Jacob Coleman in the secondary. So, um, obviously, you know, we got Jet White over at the corner as well, who's a big-time playmaker for us. So, uh, you know, we got there's a lot of stars in this game on both sides of the ball, and it should be a fun game. All right. All right. All right. Thank, right. Thank you so much, right. Coach. Thanks, Good luck. Thank <laughs> hey, thank you, guys. All right, let's get ready for kickoff. All right, Bob, again, we're on the visiting side. It's kind of it, nice. It's like 95 degrees no, right it's, now. It, it's been hotter. Everybody, as everybody knows, it's been hot it's been so the last hot, couple of days. We, we, we did our talk show yesterday. It was hot. We're doing a game tonight. It's hot. It's hot everywhere, but that's all right. We're expecting it to be hotter on the field. Now, flag will kick off, and I expect this thing to probably go out of the end zone. You got Kobe Boykin. Uh, he's deep right now with uh, Centrell Wise. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Flag's got a big leg. I saw him kick last week. My Lord, he has a leg. Six foot four, about 200 pounds. He knows what he's doing. He also is a tight end. So we'll see what happens. Ball's going to be in play. Boykin's going to take it from the five-yard line. He's looking for a lane. He's going to go to the far side of the field. He has... He's finding his way. Bob gets out to the 30, 25-yard return, pushed out of bounds. First and 10 for Orange. Well, as we know, Orange wants the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Kobe Boykin is their number one playmaker. So, <laughs> your Belinda, you got to be careful putting the ball in his hands at any time. You heard, uh, of course, uh, Dan DeForest talk with Coach Pedroza and talk about his offense. And, uh, you know, Boykin played last year. He's only a junior. He's... Man, he had like 1,200 yards rushing and just did an outstanding job. Bob, you described him last year. What a, what a pleasure to watch him. You oh. described him as a video game. Yeah, I mean, it was like watching a video game, yeah, right? Yeah, joystick up here <laughs> working him. He's just such a good athlete. And, uh, you know, his patience, you know, what, what, watch for him. He, he takes his time. He looks for the hole. He, he lets his blockers do their job. And then he just blasts through the hole. He's got such that, a pleasure to watch. That combo we talked about, speed and quickness. He has it both. And that's the freshman, Hype Graham, the quarterback. Or excuse me, he's a sophomore. Looked like he may have just bobbled that just a little bit. I'm not sure if that was the play call, but uh, he went again and just uh, took it right up the middle. Got a couple yards out of it. Young quarterbacks on this team, Bob. Uh, yes. <laughs> we'll talk about Oscar Rios here in a minute. He took a lot of snaps the first couple of games. Play action fake, pass over the middle, incomplete. Tended receiver was Jonathan, Jonathan Smith. And it'll bring up third down. You know, that's one that's there. That was there for Orange. That pass has got to come down just a little bit. And that would have been a big gainer. Third and seven here. Looking for a pass. 
Boykin goes in motion. Pass is complete. Over to middle. That's Wise with the catch. And Wise gets the first down. It's good, to, it's good to see Marinell at the ball early, Bob, yeah, because well, they, we, they really keyed on Boykin last week. Yeah, I was going to say, a week ago, Cope Cubby was just a, accounted for everywhere by that Villa Park defense. So they had to find some different ways to get some other people going here. Well, they're spreading the field a little bit. This time, the give is to Boykin. A little delay. And he's going to come up. He's going to pick up maybe a couple yards. See, the markers are on this side of the field, so we can't <laughs> see it. It's a little a little tougher. Listen, we, this sunshine is great. The view up here is awesome, but not good for football when the main camera is going to have a big glaring red ball in it, you know, after the whole game. Beautiful view of the Tustin foothills right across yeah. the way from us there. Real nice Can't up there. Dead. Okay, second and eight after a two-yard gain. Pass out to Wise here in the flat, and pass is incomplete. Wise was hit right away. And that was Jet White picking up the ball. Wise is down. Bob, he took a good shot Boy, from the, the back. The defender read that right from the start. He never, he never bought on anything that Jet White was selling out here onto our near side. We can take a look at it one more time. Yeah, he never bought into it at all. He was right on that, right as the pass got into the intended receiver, man. He just buried his shoulder pads right into there. And broke that pass up. That's a great play. The offensive line's already broke huddle, Bob. They're they're on the line. Skilled guys are making some substitutions, but uh, the play's been called. It's going to be a third and eight. That was Jason Escobar on the uh, on the play on the defensive side for the Mustangs. That was a tough tackle right there, I'll tell you. Big third down situation. Grand in the backfield with Boykin. Third and eight. It's the opening drive for Orange. Opening drive of the game. Grant's looking, lets it fly, has a man wide open, but it's picked off. Coming back the other way now. And that's a big play. They might throw a flag. It was a late landing. <laughs> it's the only place I could put it. Dylan Gardner uh, made the interception there, Bob. Here's the replay. Boy, he just read it the whole way, right? Stops. He's got a receiver open downfield, but the pass comes up short. He was wide open. And Gar I, he, Gardner he, just read that the entire way. He could not have been any more open than that. It's just a little short. If he gets a little more air into that pass, he's yeah. got a chance to complete it. But the pass coming up short was an easy pick. Ren Bill is the quarterback. J.J. Conrad out right. He's their main receiver. And we got Sauce, and it's Salcedo. Talk to some of his teammates before the game. They call him Sauce. So Sauce in the backfield. Ah, so nice. Salcedo. <laughs> Here we go. The give to Salcedo. Breaks the tackle. Keeps on his feet. And a host of tacklers bring him down. It looks like he got first down yardage on that run. About 11-yard gain. Everybody wants to establish that run early. And there's a shot of William Salcedo. He played last year, but remember, they had Colbison in the backfield right. last year. That guy was an animal. Ardwan he... Morris finally makes a stop for the Panthers, but not before a big run on the first play, on the first scrimmage play for the Mustangs. Really want to get their offensive line going here early on, too. They really want to get that run blocking established. First down in motion goes J.J., Conrad has the ball, tripped up after a short gain. Like a wildcat there, Bob. This line really moves well. Kaz Asley, the left tackle, leading the way. They're going to move a lot. This is a this is a line that will that will pull, that will stunt, they'll get all over the place, and they'll try to open these holes as much as they can to get this running game going. That's just going to make that pass game they want to get going even easier. Well, one good thing about your Linda, they have a little bit of depth, and they don't have any linemen going both ways, so stay a little fresher. They give the Salcedo right through the gut of the defense, and he gets out to the 25-yard line. About a yard shy of a first down there, I think. They're saying two yards shy. Yeah, just a little short. 24-yard line, or, yeah. Three 
So third and two. A lot of different looks so far here on offense. Receivers two out wide. Conrad to the near side. In the eye. To give the Salcedo right up the middle. And he gets the first down as he crosses the 25-yard line. You know, I think we're already seeing more defense in this first quarter than we saw all last year. In that game. Right. <laughs> now we'll see how many times they throw over to Jet White side today, Bob. See, look at that. Look at the line just clears it out. The line does a really good job of clearing some space. Salcedo so only needed two. Picked up three or four there. And new set of downs from the Mustangs. The give again to Salcedo. He's running up the middle. Right now, the offensive, the interior line so far in this series, been able to to make some holes up front for Salcedo to get through. Those aren't supposed to. Those uh, running plays right there aren't designed for big yardage. No, they, they, this is not a. Uh, they, they don't have the same kind of weapons Orange has on their side at the running yeah. back position. Yeah, I expect this thing to get good. So they, your Belinda really wants to kind of chew the chains a little bit and really just kind of wear down that defense if they can. Then they'll take their shots in the air. Pass incomplete. Bring up a third down. Third and a short four. It's a nice play by Ardwan Morris. This is a quiet crowd. <laughs> I expect it. Right there. <laughs> kicking and screaming early on. The, the Yorba Linda crowd, they've traveled well here. Yeah. Into the city of Orange. They've done uh, they've done a nice job traveling here, and the, the crowd's starting to fill in on the Orange side. But yeah, they're they're waiting to see the fireworks. <laughs> the game against La Mirada last week was really good, and and it was packed. Even La Mirada pretty much filled up the visiting side. Salcedo again up the middle. It's like five yards in a. It's like five yards in a cloud of dust for him. Did he get down inside five before he stopped? Wow. Just doesn't stop. I mean, I would just at this right now the way it looks, I would just make orange. Prove they can stop the run, which right now the offensive line is just having their way with that defensive front of the Panthers. So it's first and goal now at the four yard line. Your Belinda threatening. We're going to talk about the first couple of weeks as we uh, get through this first quarter here for both teams. It's been an interesting first two weeks for both squads. Now they have a fullback in there. They're going to go in the eye. Salcedo again up the middle. And did he get in? It Close. looks like he did. And the far side ref says yes. Touchdown. Salcedo. Four yards out. And the Mustangs get on the board first. Six nothing. Bob, their kicker flag has a big leg. I think we talked a little bit about it. Right. But I'm telling you, man. Uh, he was kicking extra points that were just going out of the stadium last well, week. Well, we knew they were in field goal range when they got down inside to about the 30-yard uh, line there. But uh, they were looking for six all the way they got. So the first score of the game goes to your Melinda. We'll see if that touches off the fireworks show this year that we saw a year ago. All right. Beal into the ball game. Bob? Going to go for two. Going for two. Interesting, huh? Right off the bat. You know, they, the way they've been running the football. Salcedo back in the I formation. They've been running the same play over and over, and he gets in for the extra point. That's a two-point conversion, I believe. Yep, they put the hands up. Orange came up with the ball, but once you cross that plane, once it's Once you cross done. it, it's over. Yeah, it's over. You can drop the ball, let anybody pick it up, let them run it back for the exercise. 7 nothing. I'll check that. 8 nothing with 6-16 left here in the first quarter of play. And it's been all Salcedo. Couldn't have drawn that up any better, right? They ran the football. That's what they wanted to do. They chewed up the chains. Well, now what do we got? I don't know what's going on here now. They must have been a flag on that play, Bob. They're going to kick it now. 
The scoreboard even said eight. The ref had his right, the ref both went. hands up. He signaled ex he signaled conversion good. But uh, there must have been a flag to play. They pulled it back out. We're busy looking at everything else we right now. We, did, we didn't get a signal on it. <laughs> yeah. So now it's going to be an extra point right. by flag. Don't want to give points that aren't deserved, Bob. Holy moly. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field now. 6.18 left. 7 nothing. Your Belinda. Well, I was going to say it wasn't a bad idea to go for two. Make, them, uh, make, make the orange defense prove they can stop your running game. I'd go for two every time if that's the way they're going to be able to run the football well, they're running, like we saw in that first opening possession. They're running the ball up the gut good. Bill is a great quarterback. Let's take a look at the sponsors. Yeah, let's uh, let's give our thanks to DeForest Realty, of course. Big Dan. Big Dan. Always making things happen. Lighthouse escrow. Uh, we want to thank the good folks over there at Lighthouse for helping us out. Level Up Cycle House. Our man, Max Quintana. Thank you for your support. Modern Woodman. We're going to hear from Elizabeth a little bit later, Mom, with Modern Woodman. Reem, the new degree of comfort and we all need some comfort in this heat oh, thank man. you reem and of course rock and brews rock and brews restaurant uh locally here in the city of tustin and suzuki thank you to all of our sponsors for helping us out and helping us bring this game to you tonight on this thursday night yeah without our sponsors we wouldn't be here tonight nope, we wouldn't be here at all and these kids would not be getting promoted plus they're putting money in our scholarship foundation as well that we'd be giving away scholarships at the end of the year. The kick by flag goes into the end zone. Boykin catches it, but it's a touchback, and Orange will get the ball back at the 20-yard line. Their first uh, drive started at the 25, so they're going to start a five yards shy of their initial opening drive, and let's see what happens. They did not try to run their main guy, Boykin. They were disguising things. They were putting people out wide. They threw the ball. Um more than they ran and you know Boykin's gonna blow up a few plays here you know it's gonna happen well I know they were frustrated a week ago that uh, Villa Park really targeted Kobe Boykin kind of had him bottled up a little bit they were hoping the game plan would be a little more opened up I think this week and uh, try to do some different things but uh, your Belinda of course ready for that as well so I think we're gonna see some things here on this on this second drive I, I still think hey Kobe Boykin man that's your playmaker And right when you said it, like magic, is he gets the ball, picks up a couple yards. Picked up quite a few, actually. Looks like about a five-yard gain, at least. Bring up second down. That's your guy. I mean, I get it, right? If they bottle him up here and there. But you've got to keep feeding the guy who's going to be able to, because when he pops one, man, he'll pop it. He's gone. Little fake to Boykin. Pass out to the flat. And I believe they will get first down yardage out of that reception. It's a little slip screen Jacob, out there. That was Jacob Coleman on the receiving end of that ball. Yeah, There's just a little slip, slip screen out there, and then you try to get somebody in open space out there. He's about a half yard shy. They said first and, oh no, it is first and 10. Okay, they did. They're set, setting the marker now. First and 10. This pass is incomplete. Tended receiver was Coleman once again. Got to be careful on those kind of passes. Got to make sure that's a forward pass, not a lateral. If it's a lateral, it can be a live ball out there. Second and ten. And that's one where Hype Grant's got to just set his feet and make sure he gets the pass out there. He's kind of bouncing a little bit through that one. Just flew it right over the uh, head of the intended receiver. All right. Grant's waiting for the ref to signal. Let's play. They're going to move the ball if it was misspotted. And they move the ball back to, so it's going to be second and 10, not second and 12. So, spot adjusted, Bob. In the eye now, Boykin in the backfield with Grand. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Pass is incomplete. Going over the middle. 
That was number 23, Jonathan Smith Jr. Now that was a much better pass for Grand right there. Watch him set his feet and then watch how strong his arm is here. This was impressive. Bam, that pass is right there. He's a youngster, only a sophomore, so he's got, you know, got some learning to do, but uh, if Smith can interception. Take that, yeah, Smith can take that in, man. That's going to go for some extra yardage right there. Interceptions will teach you a lot not to do that again. <laughs> right. You know? All right, everybody out wide, nobody in the backfield. Boykin goes in motion, stops and reverses his field. It's coming back. Pass goes to the opposite side of the field, but it didn't fool your Belinda. Smith brought down immediately by number 14, Ryan Gary. So, fourth down, Bob. Fourth and nine, maybe eight, eight and a half, possibly. Yeah, I don't know where this play's going right here. I mean, this isn't going to go for much. Even if you complete it, it's not going to go out there. The linebacking crew, much too quick to the spot right there. They make the tackle, and now Orange is going to be forced to punt. J.J. Conrad is deep for your Belinda. Wise gets a nice high kickoff. Conrad fields it at the 28. Conrad trying to get to the outside. He does. And runs out of bound at the 45-yard line. First and 10 for your Belinda. Not a bad return. That's good field position. Nice little return for the Mustangs. And you're right. They'll set up shop on their own 45. Really good field position to start this second possession. So there's 426 left here in the first quarter play. 7-0 your Belinda. This is their second possession of the game here. I mean, I expect to see a heavy dose of Salcedo again here on this drive. Why not? I'd keep running until they could stop me. Doesn't look like anybody's going to be able to stop them, though. Not right now, but it's early. So we got to make the adjustments. They'll adjust. It'll take a little bit. But here goes Salcedo again. And he crosses miss midfield. And gets down to about the 47, maybe the 48. Looks like where they're going to spot it. So it's about a seven or eight yard gain. Boy, tripped up just across the 50 yard line, or else that thing might have gone down deep into orange territory. He had a head of steam going. Second down three. Boy, you love those second and three situations. You can do so many things with second and three. Salcedo, lone back. Quick pass Ooh. over the middle. Almost picked off by Jet White. <laughs> Boy, they, they tested Jet here on this near side, and Jet almost got it. But here's one. the deal. He still got his hands on right. the ball. That's, that's you know, that's Jet. The ball came to him. He got his hands on the ball. He's all, he is all over the field. They don't, they, don't, they don't throw to his side rarely, right? And why would no. you? Why would you? Yeah. We talked with them last night on the air at Prep Sports Night Live, and, uh, you know, I asked him, hey, you get lonely out there sometimes? He goes, I get my best workouts, I guess, in practice, because during games, they just do not throw. And notice, he's on J.J. Conrad today. Again, Salcedo with the ball, runs off tackle. He gains a couple yards. Matter of fact, he got a first down on that carry. He runs down about the 44 Again, we're blocked out of the yard mark. Yeah, we're on. It's on the 44. First and 10. We'll see if Orange starts bringing a little more pressure here. If they can get your Belinda's into some passing situations, we'll see. It's been it's been like second and three. A lot of first downs they've been picking up here, so they got to get uh, they got to get that Yorb offense in a position where Orange can bring some heat. I like this. JJ Conrad and Jet White going at each other. Bill makes the pass down the flag, and the pass is incomplete. It could have been a flag on that, but the ball was in the air when they had contact, so. Yeah, no, that's good defense. Defenders yeah. got every right to the ball as well. Absolutely. So to bring up second and 10. And we'll see if they go back to running. The running game for Yorbalin has been great so far today. They've taken a few more shots here in the in this second possession. Trying to come off the play action, but there was good pursuit that time. Again, Beal had to get rid of it, I think, a little quicker than he wanted to.
Hill looking to pass. And Conrad somehow <laughs> fell down in the middle of the field. Jet, Jet White right there. And a pass will be incomplete. Bring up a third and ten now. I think they got their feet tangled up with each other. Conrad went down. Jet stayed up. Incidental contact. Referees keep their flags in their pocket. I think it's a good no call. Conrad averages 22 yards per catch ball. 22. Today, not so much. Not yet. Not First yet. quarter still. And here's that third and ten situation. Let's see if Orange brings a little more heat now. And here they come. The referees blow the plate dead. It's funny because the ref, the side official pointed the other way. Now he calls procedure. But he was <laughs> the White House a little confused there. It's procedure. How can it go play, against the D? Right. False start. Your Belinda. Five yards from previous it spot. It remains third down. Bob, I flubbed the open today, so you know he could flub a call <laughs> you know here. What? We all get we all get a do over at some point, right? <laughs> His heat, man. Everybody gets one. We could throw it on that. Well, Just our incompetence up here. Here we go at the 49-yard line. Third and 15 after the penalty. This ball has to be thrown up. Here they come with the blitz. Pass is complete to J.J. Conrad. Conrad almost got the first down on that. Going to be close. What, about a yard shy? Two yards shy, maybe? So it'll bring up a fourth down. They're saying fourth and three on the clock on the scoreboard. Here it is again, Bob. Just fourth a quick pass out there. Conrad coming up. Somehow he was able to shed Jet White. See now picking up those 10 yards really gets your excuse me, picking up those uh, 12 yards really gets you in a spot now where you can attempt this fourth down. Well, they're changing up a little bit. They're filling the middle, and that's where Salcedo's been running. Flag gets open, the tight end, and he gets the first down. That's his fourth catch of the year. Got one for a touchdown, and that's a good possession reception right there. That's a really nice pass by Ren Beal, too. I mean, he just drops it right over the top of the defender, right into the hands of his big tight end, and it's a big gainer for the Mustangs. They keep this drive alive. First and 10 at the 25 now for your Belinda they break huddle be getting into the red zone pretty soon here with 202 left here in the first quarter of play Salcedo again running straight ahead oh sauce looking to cut back he does and he's brought down after about a 12 13 yard gain he's just outside the 10 yard line man what a hole out over that left side that's Kaz Asley territory out there, the big left tackle, number 70. Boy, they just made a huge hole. No, but no, no orange and black jersey to be found anywhere out there. Seems a little scary because they were they were facing <laughs> they looked for it on fourth down. Got just enough, and now they're positioning themselves for another score here. We'll see if Orange can tighten up right here on defense. Official stop the play. Is it procedure? For the play, false start, your Belinda. Five yards from previous spot, it's still first down. That's the second one on this drive. Well, you see what happens? We sing the praises of the old line, and then what happens? Then they forget the snap count. <laughs> oh, well, it was happens. it the line? Well, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been a wide receiver out there. <laughs> don't blame it on so don't blame it on the tight end, right? No, it was him. He moved. Wasn't me. Either way, first and fifteen. Ball on the sixteen now. Gives the Mustangs a little bit more room to work here. Oh, hmm. somebody fell down out there. I didn't see the receiver's number. Oh, it was J.J. Conrad. No, nope, it wasn't. It's Dylan Gardner, number 12. 
He's he's hating himself right now. He's just putting his head up. He's got his hands on his side like, oh, man. <laughs> a good I chance slipped. There. <laughs> How did that happen? On this beautiful field down here. He was wide open, too. He really was. He was probably would have had six on that. Second and 15. Ball on the 16-yard line. Trips to the right side. Bill looking. And they're going to sack him. And we'll see where they put it. Again, it's hard to see the spot from our vantage point on the visiting side. Well, it's a much better job by the Orange defense. Look how they hold their spots. And then as the play collapses, they're able to just bring down Beal right there. Two-yard loss on the play. And this is what Orange needs to turn their fortune around. Keeping them out of the end zone, holding them possibly to a field goal. It's not guaranteed, but right, this, need a stop right here. This is a this is a big stand right now by the Orange defense. Bill's going to be out in the shotgun formation. Salcedo flanking him. Bill looks, passes. Intercepted. And it looks like a little horse collar out there prior to the play. The ball's returned out to the 32. And it'll be Orange's ball. Let's have a look at that play again. Look at the, the point of the interception, Bob. Well, I'll tell you, I think they wanted Sassino coming out of the backfield. But the coverage was really good on him. And so when Beal went to the check down, here it is. Here's a look at it again. Watch Salcido come out of the back line. I think that's where Beal's looking at first. Yeah, look him now. He comes back to the right, and now it's off the hands of the intended receiver. It's up for grabs at that point. And that's just a nice job by Orange to make a stop. And right go the other way. About Orange needed a stop. Yeah. They got the stop. Not only that, they got a turnover. And that ends the first quarter of play here from Fred Kelly Stadium on the campus of El Medina High. 7 nothing in favor of the Mustangs. So far, the running game's been the whole first quarter here. And basically, for Yorba Linda, they've been able to pretty much control the clock. And uh, I, I do expect Orange to get out there and start breaking stuff, Paul. little surprised because I think Yorba Linda went, tried to force the pass, I think, a little bit more on this second possession. I, I don't know. I mean, I, Orange didn't show at all they could stop the run on that opening possession. Mustangs went right down, ran it down their throats. I would have just kept running the football. But I get it. There's a game plan in place. But sometimes you got to adjust to some of that stuff. If the defense is giving you something, you take what they give you. They run equally well. I mean, this is a very balanced team. It is Belinda. indeed. And I get it. They want to put the ball in the air at times, too. I mean, they've got, they've got the combinations to do it. No doubt about it. But off the turnover, let's see if the Panthers have something going now. No movement. Have a little motion. Boykin was coming. Maybe a motion call. Back him up five yards. First and 15. All right, first and 15. This is the first half opening uh, play of the second quarter. Boykin gets it. Looking for somewhere to go. And he's bottled up real quick. Going for a loss. That's something you won't see very often. They ran to the short side of the field. And there wasn't much room there. Well, right away, the offensive line got stood up right at the point, and there was just nowhere for, for Boykin to go at that point. You need a much better push out of your offensive line. If you're the Panthers right now, you're going to need something more. Get those holes opened up for those playmakers. That was a four-yard loss on that run, so... Look at the formation. Five out wide. I'm sure somebody's going to come across in motion and there goes Boykin in motion 
throw to Boykin out in the flat. He picks it up. And out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So picked up a few yards. And to bring up third down, say 13. Not a six-yard pickup there. Well, the defense is right there. I mean, as soon as Boykin turns around and tries to go upfield, there's not really much he can do. Got to get that ball out a little quicker. A little Once quicker. he starts getting the flat, it, exactly it. give him some, some room to work. Once he's in the open field, good luck. They just haven't been able to get him there yet. Looks like they're changing the play. That'd be an audible being called right now. Pass out is complete. Did he catch it? No, he was bobbling it. Oh. That's Jet White on the receiving end. So the ref's saying a little bobble there. And it'll bring up fourth down. So again, they can't complete the pass when they need it. And they've had some open receivers at times. Are they going for it? No, Wise is the punter. He's in there. Weird formation for a punt. Could be a quick kick, though. Yeah, there's no reason nah, to try to drop him back. No reason to try to make the defense jump. <clears throat> it's five yards will get you not much here. Pretty good punt. There we go. Conrad with it. Trying to work to the outside. Nice move. <laughs> nice move. Still on his feet, crosses midfield. Trying to get to the far side. Boykin brings him down finally. Two really good moves. He should have been brought back here in their end territory at the 45, but just some good running there by Conrad. He's fun to watch. I'll tell you this. He is. Uh, we talked about it, man. We watched these kids last year, a year ago, how good they were, the show they put on. We were just waiting for it again this year. A couple of cutbacks. That was a good run. Entertaining. First and 10, ball on the orange 45-yard line. Man, orange lost that momentum they got, you know, by making the stop on, right. on your Belinda. The Mustangs were at the 11-yard line. They turned them back. Really need to be able to capitalize on that somehow. They give the Salcedo. They're going right back to the run, and they're stopped this time after about a yard pickup. Bring up second and nine. I mean, you do realize it would serve us right after all those points last year. We would have a defensive battle this year. Right? It's very early. <laughs> that would be funny. I don't expect it, but, hey, you never know. Listen, with this many athletes on the field, it's just a matter of time. It's true. People are a little tight at the very beginning, and then, you know, you get hit in the mouth a few times. You finally wake up and say, okay, payback. Let's go. Well, and all it takes is that one shot, right? You right. Just, if, if for Orange, if you can get Kobe Boykin. Boy, you get him through a hole somewhere and he takes off, man. That right, that changes your whole outlook right there. Second and nine. The give again to Salcedo going up the gut. Two yards. And it'll bring up third down. Third and seven. A defensive front for Orange doing a much better job of holding up at the point of contact here not letting yep. those runs get you know into the five six seven yard range They're trying to trying to hold Saucedo down to those two three yard runs he was getting five yards per carry in the first uh first quarter and you know orange is going to adjust to it takes a little time and they've definitely stepped them on two up the gut runs so far bill with it now he's going to go up the middle and he's brought down Crosses the 40 down to about the 39-yard line. Bring up a fourth down. They went for it before. I have no doubt they'll go for it again. Fourth and four, they say. It's about fourth and five. Pretty close. And why not? Yeah, I agree with you. This is more like five yards and four. If you look at where the stick's at. Conrad to the near side. Gardner to the far side. Salcedo lined up. Behind Bill. Quick toss out to the middle, and it Ooh. is almost intercepted. Pass is incomplete. Gardner was the intended receiver. 
Incomplete pass to bring a fourth down or check that. That's uh that's over on downs, Bob. So yep, be, that was a fourth down play, so turn Orange, over on downs. Orange takes over on downs and be first and ten now for the Panthers. We saw it on the replay with that pass just a little bit behind the intended receiver. And uh, that's all the difference it made. We saw that get picked the first time around. They're lucky it didn't get picked the second time. Hey, Bob, it's down to 92 right now. <laughs> Boy, we're catching a break, huh? Oh, man. Here we go, first down. Grant keeps it, tries to stretch it out. Grant loses a yard or two, depending on the spot on that play. Boy, the pursuit from the Yorba Linda defense is relentless. It we're, has been today. Yeah, we're, we're just going to need a much better job of getting some linemen out there. And trying to get uh, trying to get more guys blocking out there. Clock is running. We have a look at the last play. You had, a, you had a spot, and look how quickly it just breaks down. Yeah. I think he, he's young, sophomore. Probably should have cut up on that first hole when he had and picked up a few yards. Just lost one, second and 11. Here goes Grant, here goes Grant again. Woo! And that's, a, that's what they're looking for. The hard play right there. Look yeah. how quick he got through that hole. Fast, man. He's very quick. All right, Grant. Now we're going to have a sportsman-like uh -oh. sportsman -like penalty. Up to the rest of the teammates to get in there and pull those guys out of there. The officials sorting things out. Hey, that one ref looks like Bruce Rollinson down there, Bob. <laughs> you know what? He does. That big, that big mustache. Yeah. He's not far up. I think Bruce needs a, he needs a second job, right? Yeah, I'm following the white hat right now. He's locking it up tomorrow night. After the play was over. Uh, personal foul, number 33, Yorba Linda. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. All right, Bob. There you go. All right, they're going to get uh, Yorba Linda for a little extracurricular activity after the play. He called number 15. I cannot believe that Beal was out there. No, he's uh, well. He called a different number. Did I'm he? not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the kid's name. I'm not gonna. All right. He feels bad enough. He got that penalty anyway. I think he feels good that he got that penalty. He got some, <laughs> some aggression out, man. I don't think the coach he sounds gonna like that well, of one. Of course not. <laughs> Especially when they look at the film tomorrow. But it gives Orange some really new life here. It certainly does. Yep, keeping on both those guys now with the run. Grant keeps it, following Beal. Grant brought down. Oh, Grant. But that was an interesting run there because Boykin was kind of running side by side with Hype. Why should they get out there together? I almost thought. I almost thought Kobe was going to break out a little bit. We might see a little wishbone there, but Nicoletti brings him down. Wouldn't that be an interesting uh, formation to run with these guys? The two guys who can run the ball like that? Well, that's what we're seeing right now. That's what they're going to. You don't know if he'll ha hand it to Boykin and he'll take off or if Grand will keep it. But have that little pitch option would really be something. They got Boykin's number called and Grand kept it. Got two yards. Yeah, they're keen on Boykin still, which they should. That you should. You have to. Well, you, right. He's you their wanna, playmaker. You want to shut down their playmaker, and, and they they know full well what he did to them a year ago. So they know what Kobe Boykin is very capable of. Now Boykin indicated last night he's going to Utah. Correct. And we know Jet's going to USC. Jet White. Correct. These are youngsters, man. Two big time programs right there. Yeah, we got a more playing time. More time to improve and get ready for the big time. Brand throws. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Smith. And I'll bring up. You know, I don't mind that play call at all, but uh, Ryan Gary just stays home the entire way, doesn't buy into the uh, the run option. 
But I kind of like that. Hypes been running the ball so well, then he pulls up and he throws right down the seam. Interesting. Wow, the ambulance is kind of backed up here. Yeah, I didn't see anybody get no, hurt, I though. I didn't either. I didn't see any injury, but you're right. We've got some uh, Maybe some he's lights. just trying to back in or something. We'll see. All right. This is fourth down. Six. Ball on the 31 of Orange. Everybody's out wide. Boykin goes in motion. Quick pass, like a fade almost, and it's caught. It's caught. Wise up high for the reception on that. Central Wise, Bob. Well, we got a late flag of back here as Hype Grand is down. We might get a late hit, so we might tack some yardage on the end of this one as well. See what the official calls. Everybody holding their breath. They're gonna bring it back, Bob? No. I can't believe they would. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 28, Yorba Linda. Half the distance after the end of the play. First down. Wow. All right, so there you go. A little roughing the passer. Half tack on the yardage distance. on the great throw from Hype Grand. Watch this. Sets his feet, gets it up, takes the hit. And the defender gets his back turned, gets turned around a little bit, and then it's just a great play. You get one of your playmakers to go up and catch that. Boy, look at that. That's just a nice catch. The throw and the catch. That's the kind of spark Orange needed right there. See if they can capitalize on it. First and goal, ball at the two and a half yard line. Timeout on the field. And it looks like Orange is going to call a timeout. They want to get on the, on the, you know, everybody on the same page on this play. They need to get a touchdown here. Well, Five. Their, their defense has been out there a lot in this first half. So. Yeah, they have, absolutely. So Not a bad idea to get a little breather here at this point. All right, let's take our sponsors one more time here as well. We'll take them all throughout the night. DeForest Realty, Dan DeForest, Lighthouse Escrow. We thank them for all their generous support. They've been with us from day one. Level Up Cycle House, Max Quintana. That's in the city of Costa Mesa. Thank you to Max and uh, his crew at Level Up. Modern Woodman. We're going to hear from Elizabeth at, at halftime. We're going to hear Good. what Modern Woodman does because uh, they're so great. And we thank them for all their support. Reem, man, keeping your air conditioning unit going this time of year is of the utmost importance. Reem has got you covered. Rock and Brews. Of course, when we do our Wednesday night show, Come see Sports us. Night Live. Come see us. Come see us. It's live. And Suzuki, thank you so much for all your support. All those companies, support them, please, because they are big supporters of high school athletics here in Southern California and helping us do it. Good job, Bob. Morris in the backfield now. He's wearing number five. And Bob, I think that's Rios. Ooh. Passes incomplete. Oscar Rios is now at quarterback. He's the one that's got that has received most of the reps during the right. season. That's his 39th pass of the year. Um, it's only a freshman. Two touchdown passes on the season. And, and you know, I really wonder if Coach Pedroza wouldn't like to see him win this job. And then you were able to use Hype Grand as another weapon out there, right? I mean, is that, is put him out wide. Put him at running back alongside Kobe Boykin. I mean, you can do a lot of things with that kind of speed. Hey, they heard you, Bob. Here he comes back Here out comes. again. If you can get this freshman to win this job outright and run this offense, I tell you, you got a lot of possibilities moving Hype Grand all over the field out there. All right. Everybody's in the backfield. Morris, Boykin, Grand. And it's a keeper. I think he's in. Did he get it? How could he not be? Nobody said anything yet. Boy, Orange really did a nice job of moving that pile. Offensive line had a great push right in the middle there. I don't think he got in, Bob. They haven't wow. signaled yet. 
There. They gave it to him. Yeah. There it is. Man, I don't know why I it took him so long. That's the second longest touchdown call I've ever seen. <laughs> it looked to me like that was a touchdown right from the start. Big push by the offensive line. Nice run by Rios. I'm like, they got that easy, right? <laughs> the yeah, referees made him sweat it out a little bit. So we'll see if they're going to kick the extra point, and it looks like they are. extra point right here. I think I'd say that this early in the game. Nice kick. Right down the middle. Yep. And Bob, he escaped my roster today. 64. I love when those linemen come in and they're the kickers as well. I guarantee you that's a soccer kid as well because that kick was right down right down Broadway. Seven seven five twenty two left. Let's see if Jarber Linda answers yeah, look at here. That push. I mean, that's not even close to not being in. I don't know what the referees were looking at, but anyway, they got it right. They got the touchdown on the board. And look at that. I mean, we watched Jarber Linda go up and down this field here in this first half. Only put seven points on the board. They got to be a little disappointed, I think, to look at that scoreboard and see themselves tied now with Orange with yeah. as few opportunities as they've had. Their second possession, you know, right. they, they scored on their first one, a second one, they were at the 11. And uh, Orange pushed them back. That could be, you know, momentum changer right there. It's so early in the game still. We're not even at halftime yet. And there's a short kick, lands at the 20 yard line. Uh oh. And somebody's breaking loose. We just talked about this. Nice return. Wow, didn't expect that. That's number 33, Jason Escobar. And Escobar had a pretty good run. 50-yard return. Well, I'll tell you, sometimes those short kicks end up in the hands of a lineman, and then you don't get much of a return. That one actually ended up in the hands of somebody who can make a play. Escobar takes it. Nice Just keeps running. Back right here it comes the cutback right there picks up some extra yardage at the end of it well you talk about needing momentum the Mustangs just got it Salcedo in the backfield Bill under center to give to Salcedo he's going to try to go off tackle he does he gets two yards can't say it's out of dust anymore because the field's all synthetic right. now so you can't no say no more clouds of dust no more there. three yards under a cloud of dust you know a cloud of uh nothing rubber, rubber. tire shavings yeah, yeah that's what it is rubber ground, shavings baby ground up tires they used to uh <laughs> to help cushion your blows to settle these fields in here so that actually said he got one yard so it's second and nine and Orange has adjusted to the running game. They really have. No, the defense is doing a much better job in the second quarter than they were in the opening quarter. Stand that full back in there, and there goes Salcedo again, and he gets a first down. Nice play. Nice run. And you know what made what made that happen, Bob, was number 28. Elficki. Elficki came through there in the in the fullback position and just blew open a hole. Salcedo just took off running. Watch this play. 28, bam, and he follows him. Once you can open that first hole, man, you give your running back a chance to get through there. Make well, the fullback actually, Elficki made that happen. Trust me. That man was coming in already ready to tackle Salcedo and this is what happens and there goes Salcedo again went to the outside can he outrun the defense and he falls just short at the four good touchdown saving tackle there by the defense and that was uh, Jalen Lightfoot so Lightfoot saving a touchdown well this is the recipe that got him going uh, early on in the game in that, uh, that opening possession yep so it's going right, to be running left. First and goal at the four yard line. And let's see what happens. I'd run Salcedo all four times if it took that many to get in the end zone. 
Got the fullback in there again, Elfiki. And he pushes the defensive end back, and Salcedo scores. Watch that play. If you see it again, watch 28. Just kick out the end, and it's just child's play from there for Salcedo. Touchdown, Mustangs. That offensive line got tested, but they came up big on this possession. They certainly did. Plenty of time on the clock for Orange to do something with 326 left. Flag in to kick the extra point. J.J. Conrad to hold. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. we got two good kickers here tonight. Time it on the field. 326 left here in the first half. 14-7. Your Belinda with the lead. Well, the answer right back, right? They let Orange get back into the football game. But your Belinda answers right back. That's what good teams do. One more look at the touchdown run. C28. Right. There's the kick out on the left, right? And the offensive line, the push up front on that left side. They've been really favoring that left side of that offensive line. What are tonight? Why whatever, not? They're doing the well, job. whatever side they're going to, whatever side Alfick is going to, you know, block, that's where they're going to send Salcedo. They need it now because Robert is bringing an extra player or two in the box and stopping things. There's the crowd. Welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> The Hawaiian theme going on. Oh, they're having a good time tonight. It's football, man. We've missed this for almost two years, you know. It was so uncertain for everybody. But now you should just enjoy it you know, to this, your fullest. This stadium got refurbished. It was finished during the lockdown. So nobody got to see it for a little while. Then we had that abbreviated season where we got to see Fred, the, the new Fred Kelly Stadium. I tell you, they did a great job here. They really did. Really something else putting elevators in all these high school stadium press boxes now or and here we go wise with the return wise got that like at the one maybe the two brings it out to the 18 spot at the 19 so it'll be first and 10 for orange 321 left and they got a ways to go interesting to see who comes in at quarterback here for the panthers What was the score last year at halftime? 21-14, I believe. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. Something like that. Maybe 28-21. It, it wasn't big. It no. wasn't as big was as it ended up being. A lot of that scoring came in the second half. So we'll see if that uh, holds true here again tonight. And Hype's back in at quarterback. Give the Boykin. Boykin's looking for her lane, doesn't find one, and he's stopped. He got back at least to the line of scrimmage. And that's a win-win right there for your Belendis. Anytime you can stop Boykin. Well, that time the, the, the defensive line did a really good job of standing up. The orange O-line got him moving sideways. Instead of the orange line moving forward and getting those guys, getting those holes up front, they're still moving sideways now. So there's really nothing there for Boykin to exploit. Second and ten. Grand in the backfield. Grand looking to throw. Pass is incomplete. Here at the near side. Jonathan Smith, the intended receiver. He had a couple options out there. He had Smith, he had Jalen Lightfoot. Kind of down the seam a little bit. He could have gone to either one. But again, if, uh, if Orange can just hit on a couple of these passes, it might just loosen it up enough to get that running game going. Clock stop, 233 left here. This is third and ten. But they're going to change the play. Grant's going to pass. As a man over there, it's picked off. This may be returned for a touchdown. We'll see. And it's down inside the five-yard line. Interception picked off by number 18, Wyatt Mosier. Mosier, one of the standout linebackers on this club. They got... 
They got two of them. Yeah. They got bookends on this team. The senior middle linebacker comes up big. That ball goes right into his hands. He just steps in the passing lane and takes it back. The Mustangs are in business now inside the five-yard line. Clark Sampson is the other backer, but there's Mosier. He comes right up and keeps going. Finally brought down. Boy, Saving that touchdown, right had him by the ankles was uh, Jaden Moore. Jaden Moore had him by the ankles, so... Or check that. Is that four or one? All right. Oh, could have been grand as well. <laughs> Might have been. As we come back to live action, and there's Salcedo just on a dive play, just trying to work his way into the end zone on first and goal. Ball's at the six-yard line. Bring up second down. To look at Ren Beal, the quarterback. For this Yorba Linda team. And, Three yard uh, gain. A lot on his shoulders this year. We're going to ask him to do a lot more. He did a lot last year. You know, he was the starter last year, so it's yes, great when did. you have an experienced kid come back like this. That's it, right? That's what, that's my point. And With that experience, they want him to do even more this year. Orange is going to have two good ones coming back next year. They'll figure it out. They get to Salcedo again, and it looks like he's in. They didn't call it, so maybe not. No. That was very close. Stopped apparently at the one. Both uh, the side judge came flying in and spotted it right inside the one immediately. Third down goal at the one inch line. Clock is running. The minute nine left here in the first half. Mustangs. Have a 14 to 7 lead. You're willing to happy to watch that clock run down here. Salcedo again. Has a spool back in there. Oh, they give it to Elvicki and he gets <laughs> in. Elvicki gets the touchdown, the fullback. Got it like that. Salcedo does all the heavy lifting, but hey, Elvicki made some key blocks uh, in this ball game to help his uh, running mate Salcedo tonight. And you know who loves that the most? Salcedo. He would yeah. tell you, you'd be the first to tell you, I love that. Let, let the fullback get in there and enjoy one, right? Because yeah. that's a kid doing all the dirty work up he front. He did. Let, let him get in there and get one. So the touchdown basically going to credit him with a one-yard run. With 49 seconds left here in the first half. The extra point. Oh. I don't know why they're going to run it in, I but don't they know. are. They fake. It was and a that's fake. that's Conrad. I don't know if that was a fake or not, Bob. I have no idea. I have to see that again. But there's Conrad. 22-7 to 7 now the score. Or the way, you're right. The way he's shaking his head down there, I wonder if that was a blown I, I don't hold, think he, and then he, he was just wide open here to the right and ran it right in. And JJ why, had no one, why not? No he's, one out here. He's probably the best athlete on the team overall. Hey, either way, the two-point conversion is in, 22-7. I think we can see that conversion again if we have it. If we do, let's take a look. I don't know if it was bobbled or what. I mean, it looked That's, like a good snap. Everything looked yeah. fine to me. And all of a sudden, he decided to run. The kicker even came up like he was kicking. I don't want to fix. Sometimes they'll do that. But I don't I don't think it was a fake. I, I didn't think it had been bobbled. But there's the Yorberlin, the cheerleader, celebrating the touchdown. Adding to the fanfare tonight. Let's take one more little. Yeah, I think it was bobbled. You're right. Bad snap. Bad snap. Bad snap. JJ couldn't get it up on the... Uh, to get the kick away. You and know then what? He just it looked just out to his right and said, hey, there's nobody out here. I'll just run it in. Puts more pressure on Orange, though, now. <laughs> you got to get that point. You got to make it up somewhere. 49 seconds left. Wise and Boykin are deep. We'll see if Flag kicks it out of the end zone. Keeps it away. Both are deadly return men. And the kickoff. Straight up, and the ball is at the 10 yard line. Wise fields it there and he goes to the far side of the field, turns it up, walks the tightrope a little bit, and pushed out of bounds. 43 seconds left here in the first half 22 7 Mustangs over the Panthers. You may have seen that graphic right before that kick return said Central Wise athlete. You know what that means? That means we're liable to put him anywhere, anywhere on the field. On the field. <laughs> That's it. That is an athlete. We might put him anywhere. Kids like that, they're valuable on both sides of the football. Now they're walking it back. 
No? They're right. going to say he stepped out of bounds. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna, so the, the, the rest of that return was nothing. They're going to say he stepped out, right? Yeah, that's when he was in that tightrope right there. <laughs> hey, 43 seconds left, first and 10. And let's see if they're going to go for it. A lot of teams will regroup right here. They'll just say, hey, let's just run it out. Let's go in the halftime, make some adjustments, and come back and take it to them. Rios looking, has time, still looking. Now he lets the ball fly, and the pass is come on. Wise pulls it down be between two defenders. Great concentration by Wise. That was in heavy traffic, that reception. And he gets his team all the way down into Mustang territory, and they're going to spot it at the 43-yard line. Oscar Rios did a great job of buying himself some more time. Then he threw a nice pass downfield. We get a timeout here. Watch him buy himself some time here. Doesn't panic. Still got his head up looking downfield. Takes a shot. Underthrown. Here it is again. God, Rios just let it fly. I thought, oh, no, it's up for grabs, right? You don't want to give up another a, a third interception here in this first half. And he's a freshman, man, but look at his it's body. He's right. got a nice, tall, he's lean, he can move, he's got a big arm. That's I mean, what's what not to like, man? That kind of a kid can go win your quarterback job. Now you can move Hype Grand all. Now you're talking about I, athlete I think with they, Hype Grand. You can put him all over the field. you got so many more options. Well, Coach knows what he has. He'll, he'll have it figured out before the league starts. Oh, for sure. For sure. And then into the playoffs. And that doesn't mean there are packages for hype to play quarterback, of course, but. No, but, you're, but you, you got to play him. with what, what you got. Right. You can move him all over the field, yeah. though. It's a team Rios game. Rios wins his quarterback job. It's the biggest team game out there. Rios looking, going to tuck it and go. He's got room, looking to get out of bounds, and he does. At the 31. Boy, showing some real poise for a freshman. Yeah. Obviously, he's been trained. <laughs> he could well, probably armed and dangerous. Calhoun's been right? working with I him. I mean, you know, if, if you're at that point where you can actually be considered for a varsity quarterback job as a freshman, right, that means you've done something right. Jade Moore's in the backfield now. Moore's open in the flat, but Rios has to run. He slides down. There's 16 seconds to go. And Orange is going to have to call timeout. Boy, again, a smart move by Rios. Really impressed with this kid, especially on this drive. You know, he took what the defense gave him right there, and then he slid down. Get up, get that timeout. Still plenty of time on the clock at that point. The Panthers have one more timeout, I believe, Bob. They got 14 seconds left, so either they're going to go for the end. I don't know if their kicker can go from there. That's a 42-yarder. Maybe, Push. maybe not. I don't know. But if not, you know, maybe 10 yards up field, then, yeah, he'll kick. He'll make it. So even though, it, you know, you'd love, if you're an Orange fan, for them to get into the end zone, um, it may not be what coach needs right now. He wants to get just some points. Don't come away with nothing. Come away with some momentum. No, you're right. You got to get something here on this possession. Right. You have to throw it to the, to the sideline, Bob. There's not that much time to reset if you don't right. get the ball. You have to, well, they have, they have a timeout, though. There's, there's two plays on that clock. Maybe three. With a timeout. Especially if you can get throw a ball, pa a pass, or get somebody to the outside and get out of bounds. Just get it that much closer, but... I'm sure Orange is thinking time. It's time to get a touchdown. It's going 14, 15 to 22. Rios looking. Rios dumps it off to Boykin in the flat. Boykin. Trying to get out of bounds. And, he, and it looks like he did. No? No. I think they're going to keep nope, it. Nope, that's oh. it. Water ended right there. Boykin did not get out of bounds. Again, we're shielded out. We can't see. Yeah, we're on the visiting side. We're sitting low, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't bring that to you. But if Boykin was short, 
Clock runs out. 22 to 7 is the halftime score here from El Medina High School. This is Sprint Kelly Stadium. And uh, this is the game of the week, LA 36. And Prep Sports Media, along with Prep Sports America, happy to bring it to you. And I think we're going to go down to John Conti, who will have uh, a few people to interview. But, Bob, this has uh, been an entertaining half despite the score. Well, that's a tough way for Orange to end that first half. They had a chance to score some points, put something on the board. Not Going away with nothing right there is not good for them, but uh, not a bad first half for your Belinda. They put 22 on the board. Got a nice two touchdown plus lead here at the break. Orange looks a little tight, Bob. That's what they look like to me. You know, they just... Well, you know, they got bottled up a week ago by Villa Park, and I, I just think I think that's a game they thought, okay, we're going to go there, we're going to have our chance at your... I don't know if they overlooked Villa Park a week ago. That's a... But... Uh -huh. That's a template. That's what it was there. You know, what, what Villa Park did was a template yeah. to, to maybe, keep an eye on, Boy, on Boykin. Maybe that gave some film to Yorba Linda to take a look at and say, hey, you know, here's a way to stop him. All right, here's some of the highlights in the first half. And uh, there's Grand. Hype Grand, man. He was uh, he got picked off a couple of times in that first half. J.J. Conrad, or, or check, that's Gardner on the return. Yeah, Gardner right there's there. There's the late hit. And uh, Saucedo able to cash in a couple of times here in his first half as well. Three rushing touchdowns for your Belinda. Boy, there's that one where they thought they were going back in. That was a pick, but Orange uh, left that one out there too. They weren't able to get any points off that turnover. I just think they're a little tight in the first half, Bob. I think they're going to come out in the second half and, and be Orange. You might be right. Here was the big play for Orange in that first half. There was that pass. That was a great catch. Yeah, it was a great pass, great catch. Here's another nice. look at it one more time. Boy, that was really something special. And then the, uh, the keeper into the end zone. That finally got the Panthers on the board. But then uh, your Belinda turned right back around. That man's been the workhorse. They call him Sauce Salcedo. And, man, he's just been. Sauce is the guy. The steady force in the first half uh, for your Belinda. A couple for him, one for the big fullback. And uh, your Belinda. Having their way up front a little bit, even though Orange's defense did a little better job, but 22-7, uh, the halftime score. There's the pick once again. Uh, Mosier. All right, let's go to the sidelines now. John Conti standing by with Dan DeForest. Hey, guys, definitely a different game than we had last year. I think last year the score was 60-40, to 40, but this year, you know, 22-7. to 7, Game was close up until about the last minute or two of that uh, first quarter, Dan, or the second quarter. Yeah, I think they really have bottled up Orange's running game, really bottled up Boinkin. The first half, they have kind of have a spy, and they're going to go along that front line and make sure that he doesn't get any big plays. Absolutely, and we do have some good defense being played today. I mean, to hold Orange to only seven points. And keep in mind, I do not think that Orange is going to quit. This is a team, every time we cover them, they're either in every game or they end up winning the game. So your Belinda cannot count out Orange High School. But the way they're running the ball and the way Orange is not running the ball, it's going to be pretty tough, Dan. Yeah, they really need to go and stop that Salcedo, number 41. He's going straight ahead. Straight ahead runner up and down the field. They're opening some decent-sized holes, and he's just jumping right in them. Absolutely. I mean, and that offensive line of your Belinda, you got big number 70, Kaz out there running the show. I think he's been recruited to a few colleges. These guys are blowing holes wide open for the running game, and that's obviously been the difference in the game. And, and Dan, speaking of, of, of a difference, we have sponsors, and they make a huge difference to what we do. We could not be Prep Sports Media without sponsors. So right about now, let's have Elizabeth Beltran, a modern woodman, come on up and, and join us right here. Elizabeth, Hi. thank you so much for, for being here with us, and uh, we just really want to thank you and modern woodman for being a sponsor of Prep Sports Media and bringing football on television for these kids. Of course, thank you guys so much for having me. So, so thankful to have friends like you guys that trust uh, the person and that organization that I work with. Uh, thank you so much for letting me be a sponsor tonight. No problem. Tell us a little bit about Modern Women. Tell us what you're about. Yeah, Modern Women focuses on financial planning for individuals, families, as well as business owners. We like to take a holistic approach to their financial plan, uh, make it super personalized, and just have a continuous relationship with our clients. Is uh, donating or being a part of the community part of what Modern Women's about? 
Yeah, definitely. So I would say 80% of our time is focused on the financial planning aspect, but the other 20 is definitely focused on the fraternal impact that we have on the community, um, giving back to nonprofits, schools, organizations such as Prep Sports Media is what we love to do. Great. And uh, what'd you think of that first half? <laughs> I would say both teams gave their best and they definitely performed very well. Very good. Well, thank you for uh, being a great supporter of us, Prep Sports Media. Of course, thank you. I want to thank you too. I'm just walking away with my, hey, we have someone else over. You can stay here, Elizabeth. Max Quintana, Level Up Fitness. Come on down, my friend. We're just having a party here, Fred Kelly Stadium in the end zone. Elizabeth Beltran, Modern Woodman, Max Quintana, Level Up Fitness. These two, along with so many others, have done such a great job of giving back to the community, making sure that we can get kids' games on TV, money for scholarships. So we have nothing but appreciation for these guys. Mr. Quintana, tell us what's going on tonight. It's all yours. Take the mic. Awesome. Yeah, what a great game tonight. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. I think the last time we did an interview, was uh, it was Yorba and Orange again last yes, time, was. right? Um, just amazed. What a bunch of great athletes and a great opportunity to be here tonight. Tell us a little bit about what Level Up is all about. So Level Up Cycle House is an indoor cycling studio located over in Costa Mesa across from Triangle Square. Um, you know, when we started the business, we really wanted to be about supporting the community and supporting local athletes. So this has given us a great opportunity. So I'd like to thank Prep Sports Media for giving us that opportunity. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Max. And we want to thank you. Hey, you two guys, come on over. Both of you guys, come on over. We got two more guys coming up, crowd the stage. You're also with Modern Woodman, my friend, correct? Correct. Okay, give yourself an introduction because we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'm Stephen Flores. I'm actually Elizabeth Beltran's business partner at Modern Woodman of America. Virtually, we do the same thing. Our, our logic when we do a holistic approach for our clients is you're not just getting one of us, you're getting a whole team. So if there's ever a time I may be on vacation, maybe I'm sick or, hey, you know, God's called me up uh, a little earlier than anticipated. You know, we always have someone that's going to take care of our members because we treat our members like family. And now, too, this is all about Prep Sports Media. We're one big family, another family member, Elwood Brown right here. Elwood, you're doing a great job working these sidelines tonight, my friend. Hey, I'm just happy to be out here having a great time with friends and family. So it's a good game going on. Hopefully you have a better second half. Enjoy the night. Thank you. You got anything else, Dan? What do you think it's going to take for Orange to get back in this game, John? Well, pretty simple. I mean, obviously, Orange has to stop the run. We talked about that. Uh, there's big holes for Salcedo to run through all day long. And on the other hand, you know, Orange, they cannot become one-dimensional. They cannot depend on Kobe Boykin the whole the whole second half because he got your Belinda King on, on Kobe Boykin. I, yeah, I think they're just staying at the line and spying on him, waiting to get it and bottling him up. That 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 they're not charging in that a defensive line, so they're bottling him up and keeping him from running. Yeah, and that could really be more of a credit to the Yorba Linda defense as well. So, anyways, guys, Bob, Rich, if you're up there, we're ready to go right back to you. We're here. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, we back. <laughs> oh, Bob snoozing. I had to nudge him. Hey, guys, thanks a lot, and thanks to our sponsors uh, up there tonight, because without them, this game isn't on tonight, Bob. No, big, big thank you to Modern Woodman, uh, Level Up Cycle House, Elizabeth and Max. Uh, boy, we you know we, we talk about them so often. They're so committed to helping us in what we're doing here at Prep Sports Media. Uh, it's on television, giving them a chance to get uh, noticed by colleges and, uh, and eventually giving scholarship money out to help kids get to that next level that want to play college athletics that's what we're about here at prep source media and it's so great to have partners like level up like modern woodman so many of our other sponsors you've seen we'll talk about them again well let's throw them up half. now miguel you got those uh let's get the sponsor page up let's, let's have some fun there because uh these, it these is halftime these are the people that help us make it happen right deforest realty of course dan deforest a uh, big uh, supporter of what we're doing here. I mean, he's part of the deal, right? So yep. he's got to be a big supporter of it. Big basketball guy, too. Lighthouse Escrow. Lighthouse Escrow. Thank you so much to Lighthouse. Dustin Stevie. Dustin Stevie does just a great job. He really committed to what we're doing. There's Level Up, Matt. We heard from Max. Just met Max. Max is awesome. He'll make you a 10, baby. Modern Wooden. I love that logo, too. Look at that. I got one of the better logos right yeah. there. That, that's, uh, that's good stuff right there. Fraternal Financial. I love the way uh, what they're committed to. And uh, that aligns with us. Reem jumped on board with us uh, again this year. So thank you to Reem. 
Joe Shippy helping make that happen. Rock and Brews, of course, our uh, our partners. Gene and Simmons. Where we do our show. Yeah, Gene Simmons, <laughs> one of our partners. Gene <laughs> yes, and sir. Paul, right? Those are our Absolutely. buddies. And Suzuki. Well, Bob, that first half, I'm telling you right now, uh, I expect fireworks in the second half. I don't expect it to keep going the way it was. I truly expect Pedroza to make some changes here, and we're going to see a fantastic second half. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it was about the defense in that first half, wasn't it? I mean, we didn't see a whole lot of offense, but we saw some touchdown runs. Well, and, I think uh, the difference. We saw offense, but I, well, it, we did. But you know, I think the I think the defense overshadowed the offense. The in that defense first half. was not red zone friendly tonight. I think the so I, I, I think the defense is my takeaway from that first half and uh, the amount of turnovers, uh, the uh, the defensive plays put up when they needed to, especially at the end of that first half. If Orange gets a touchdown there, we're talking about a whole different game right now. But uh, now your Belinda defense shutting that down there right before halftime. That's a big stop for the Mustangs right there. Well, these two teams have created a nice rivalry. It's going to be going for a while now. Bailey and, and Pedroza, you know, these guys are, are fairly close in proximity to one another, and it's always great to see these games. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, it's uh, it, it's fun when you get these matchups like this. You know, we saw this a year ago. It was on the calendar again for this year. We had our eyes on this game the entire offseason. We knew this was coming. It's finally here. Uh, there's some, been some great matchups in Southern California football uh, across the first uh, first well, couple of weeks of the season. And, to, and of course, on uh, tomorrow night, I believe, Modern Day and Corona Centennial are going to go head-to-head. -head. The number uh, perennial number one team in the country, Modern Day, has been for a while. And, uh, you know, Corona Centennial is, is one of the few schools – um, to, to break the the stranglehold in the CIF Southern section in terms of in terms of uh, well Bosco you know, when it, modern when it's modern, CIF and modern days when so many of them Bosco's you know stuck the in Centennial there, couple, broke that the was Centennial, the only team to break that mold on them the only, in ten the years only, the only public school that, that you can think of right that even has a chance to be in the conversation and right? prior to that Servite was the one to break it that's true so it was Servite and Centennial but Centennial was was you know. Uh, after Servite had broken it. But other than that, it's Bosco Modern Day, Bosco Modern Day. Whoever wins the regular season game loses in the CIF final. That's just <laughs> how it's been. Look it up. You'll see it. It's definitely um, holds true. That it's hard to beat good teams twice in the same season. I don't care what sport it is. It's just a difficult thing. Well, which is why I really enjoy covering the other divisions like we have here, you know, in this one tonight. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to say, hey, you know what, it's, and people make that complaint, right? It's always modern day in Bosco. And you know what? They're right. It is always modern day in Bosco. They've got the stranglehold on that top division, right? So you yes. got to start looking at these lower divisions. And when you say lower, I mean, it's just the number. It's not really even the talent, right? There's so much talent across the board here. Uh, you know, division two, three, four, five, six down the line. And, well, uh, it's, we're seeing it here tonight. Unfortunately for the upper echelon, the, the United States is their backyard and is their um, recruiting base. It's everywhere. There's so many uh, athletes moving to Southern California to get on with modern day Bosco type of schools uh, to be seen from where they're at. And me look, remember Bull Bull basketball? Man, he right. was looking around to get it the best deal he could to get the most exposure. He really didn't need to do that, though. The no. guy had all the talent in the world. We've seen baseball kids do it. We've seen basketball, football. We've seen all kinds of kids, right? They want to come and play in the Trinity League. <laughs> And, uh, and why why wouldn't they? If you've got but, the talent, it's the best it's the best league in America. Well, kind of the best thing that happened was just let everybody go where they want to go anymore. Uh, this whole thing with chasing the teams that were recruiting heavily, everybody knew who they were. Um, but just to overcome that, just let kids go play. You know, that's the bottom line. And uh, so things are changing. The landscape's changing. You've seen a lot of public school um, semi-powerhouses. Look at Mission Viejo. Probably the fourth or fifth best team uh, in Southern California, uh, and, and they're a public school. They're public, right? So I think Centennial, and, and then it's Mission Viejo, is m the number four. That's how I would look at it right now. Bishop Vermont wants to think they're in that discussion. They're as well. not going to be in that discussion yet. <laughs> they, they're always on the cusp, but <laughs> something always happens. But um, you know, uh, uh, Rollins has been around for so long that he just has it down. He just has it down. He has a, a great program. So you know. Uh, I just like the way that things are kind of evening out, but it's going to change again, Bob. We talked, we touched on it last night about the NILs already trickling down to the high schools, 
And that was fast. I thought it would take three yeah, or four yeah, years before. But now everybody's looking to make a buck. Won't even have to go to college now, you, bud. Nope. You just, you know, you, right? get your money. You make your money in high school now. Go invest it well and go live your life. You know? how, how long before the little leagues are uh, paying out? All right, junior deals? high. This whole thing's just, you know, I mean, right. a little messy now. You got to admit, though, Bob, at the college level, they were ripping off those guys for years. The NCAA is ripping off all these poor. We knew, we knew these kids needed to start getting paid. Finally, it started to happen. But you're right. The way it trickled down into the high schools off, on the heels of that. You might often crazy. wonder what would happen if Ed O'Bannon had not been playing video games at his house with his buddy one day and said, hey, Ed, you're in this game. Right. How much money are you getting? Yeah, what zero. do you need? Right? <laughs> zero. And, and it's really Ed that really yeah. spearheaded yeah. that whole uh, yeah. that whole charge to start well, getting this it, thing changed around. It's not fair. that even, I don't care if those kids got a scholarship or not. You still wouldn't be able to use their likeness as an image to make money once they're away from the game, and that's what they were doing. So I, I applaud Ed O'Bannon for sticking to his guns. Uh, what he believed in, and he changed the landscape for everybody. Well, the merchandise sales, everything else. I mean, if you sell a number one, two or one jersey, whoever the number is, well, you know what that kid that wears it at you know, at Ohio State or Michigan or UCLA or anywhere else. You know the the kid who wears that number, and everybody buys the merchandise. It's like, come on, you know, you get you got to you got to get these kids a little something because they're the ones going out there every week and performing. Well, I can't wait to see Centennial Modern Day tomorrow night. That's all I'm going to say right now. It's going to be a good game. It'll be a fun matchup. But first you know. things first, we got to get through this one here tonight. Yeah. Oh no, we're what, just uh, this is just halftime talk. Oh no, right I now. know. We're just we're speculating on the rest of the we're games. We're going to spend around, uh, the, the next uh, hour talking about Orange and Norville like <laughs> we did the last hour. This but, is uh, this. I mean, this is Thursday night again. It was Thursday night a year ago too when we did this. Yeah. So this yep. is a, this is a, a yearly date on Thursday night. Hey, you know what? If if Yorba, it's a long way to go, and I'm not saying there that this one's over by any shot. We no, know it it's isn't because we know what happened a year ago. But your Lind has already got two impressive wins on the season at Damien on the road. That shocks Well, people. one impressive win and one, one unimpressive loss. Well, <laughs> it was your, it was Villa Park, but I still think Orange should have beat him. No, uh, I'm talking I'm talking about your Belinda. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the two your Belinda, right? Uh, Orange, right? Orange is one and one, right? But I'm uh, your Belinda. That they, they went to Damien. Oh, that's right, Damien. Okay. The first You're week right. they You're won right, that Paul. one, and then La Mirada, which is always a traditional power in Southern California. We know what La Mirada's done over the years there. And uh, a big win, uh, two close uh, wins. Damien, that was 28-19. The La Mirada win was 28-13. So, your Belinda, sir, they're not sneaking up on anybody. I know uh, some of the scribes in the San Gabriel Valley were a little surprised yeah. by that uh, Damien score. They don't get they out shouldn't of the, have been. They don't get out of the San Gabriel Valley. No, they should not have been surprised at all. Because uh, if they if they had been paying attention to any Orange County football, they knew how good your Belinda was, and all the returning starters speaking of, coming back this year. Speaking of La Mirada, your Belinda's got an alumni on their coaching staff, Josh Zaha. He's a, I think he's a defensive line coach, but he's a pretty good pretty good athlete back in his day with La Mirada. He's a pretty good lineman. Uh, I think he went to CIF like three or four times in his four years there. They're going to almost every year. So it's nice to see Josh out there right now. He's standing at the 50. But La Mirada's got a state title on their that's how good that program has been over the years. Yeah, they got some stuff going on. Right now, we'll see. So, Yorberlin just come out. Orange is already out at the far side. They're ready to go. It's 11 seconds before we kick this one off again. Yorba will get the ball to start the second half as well. So, even more reason why Orange wanted to get that uh, some points on the board at least to right. end that first half. What I like too now about the about high school football is the teams are actually playing teams. You know, in the old days, they would all all these great teams would duck each other. They wouldn't right. play. They didn't want to lose a game. A lost game could mean they wouldn't be number one. You know, they were always running from each other. Now it's kind of like they're forced to play each other. You know, because now they're taking the strength of schedule that's into it. consideration, that's and, and that's why Bosco and Modern Day always end up at the top of the heap because it's in the top ten in the country. Three teams in the top ten of the country for Bosco and Centennial. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it, you know. Everybody else is running from everybody. Well, who else is going to play in a school like Modern Day or Bosco, right? I mean, well, Remember last year, Duncanville was supposed to beat the snot yeah. out of Modern Day. And Modern Day went in there and beat a 42 zip. Right. Or maybe it was 42 zip at halftime or something. But I remember they, they just took it to them. All right. Now we're back at uh, ready for the kickoff. Orange will kick off to... Your Belinda to open up the second half. And the ball is going to be caught at the two. And 
let's see where it goes as we start the second half ball brought out to the 25 yard line on the return sauce yep sauce took that sauce Cito. he's all over the place so basically in the first half Dorberlinda, a lot of ball control a lot of running very successful at it your blood like I'm mean, excuse me orange like I told you Bob I, th I think their offense just a little tight I think we're gonna see a, an explosion here in the second half of those guys well they need their defense to make a stop here on this opening possession they cannot go down three touchdowns in this football game that'd be a tough hole to climb out of there's the give to Salcedo right up the middle and he stopped after a short gain bring up second down second and eight you know, Bob, I really like these, all these new scoreboards going around. You know, Bosco got a Jumbotron a couple yeah. of years ago. Fred Kelly's got a Jumbotron now. Imagine the old days of the uh, those little <laughs> light bulb scoreboards. Yeah, man. You could never, <laughs> never knew how much time was left. Never knew what the score really was because the bulbs were all burned out. Nobody would replace them, you know. It was just a mess. Just a mess. These are like college level type scoreboards. We I would know. like to get one of those old time scoreboards from one of these high schools that are just trashing them, right. you know. Put it up in my backyard. Little play action. Bill looks up field. Pass flag wide open. Makes the grab. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. He went up high, but he got hit. The rips bit. Boy, I tell you, flag was on that far side. Like he was just running uncontested. Yeah. He's like a horse, man. <laughs> Look how big he is. Six Be four. Right? Beal saw him, and how, how can you miss him? He was wide open out there. Heck, he might be 6'5 now. These rushes were filled out prior to the season, so. Does a nice job of setting his feet, does Beal. And then oh, look fine. at that. Flag's wide open out there. Finally takes a shot at the end, but big gain for the Mustangs. Jacob Coleman on the stop, number seven, taking down the big guy. It's almost twice the size. First and ten, ball to 47. They give the Salcedos, trying to go up the middle. And he crosses midfield. He'll get down into Orange territory at the 49. Again, I expect to see a heavy dose of sauce here in this third quarter. They want to chew up some clock. Seems going to put the points on the board. I really want to try to use this clock here. Second and six. Bill throws the ball. Pass is complete. Conrad. Jet White making the stop. And the ball will be at the 35. First and 10 for the Mustangs. JJ's just like one of those Cooper Cup kind of guys. Now, I'm not comparing him to Cooper Cup, of course. No, but know, I understand but, what you're saying. Yeah, but just always always there, right? Always always somewhere making a play. Always making the catch. That's that kind of receiver you need. Just so reliable out there. He, he is the best athlete. I told you, Colvison probably was the best one last year. This guy's definitely the best one on the team this year. Bill puts it up. Oh, that's oh. going to be a penalty flag there. You can't deny that one. Gardner was the intended receiver, and uh, he definitely was interfered there. And it, that's Deion Jackson, by the way, on the on defending. And that's going to bring it all the way down. That's going to be inside the 10, possibly. Where's going to put it? That really did. Not the best pass of the night. Pass interference. Number eight, orange. 15 yards from the previous spot. First okay. down. So it's 50 from the previous spot. That so. was kind of a wobbler up there. That thing was hanging up in the sky a little too long. Uh, it was designed play, Bob, to get the, the penalty called. Yeah, well, you got it. Gonna foul him out. They, they, they sure <laughs> got it. Yeah, and there's the they turn around. Didn't ever got the body around. Clock stop, 9.25 left here in the third quarter of play. Yorbalinda leading 22 to 7. The give to Salcedo up the middle. 
Gets across the 15. Nice little pickup, about five, six yards maybe, depending on the spot. And the run will keep the ball, excuse me, keep the clock running. Under nine minutes to play here in the third. Jormelin had just taken their time, yep. not in any hurry. And Salcedo again. This time he's inside the 10. I think he might have gotten the first down here. It's going to be first and goal. Well, this has really been a heck of an opening possession here in this third quarter. Chewing up the clock, as I mentioned, that's what they want to do. They want to go down and get some points on the board. They're in position to do that as well. It's been a good mix of the pass and the run here. You know, Orange does have big play capability at any time, and I think this is what, and, Orange, and New Orleans knows this. So I give Bailey credit for just trying to milk this clock, milk the possession, keep running. You got first and goal at the eight. Elficki in there now doing some blocking. Salcedo again, right up the middle. No, you're right, Rich, because the longer you keep the orange offense off the field, the longer you're not letting them get their playmakers out yeah. there, right? Yeah. Hard to score a you touchdown. Feel it. Yeah, hard to score a touchdown from the sidelines. I don't care what you coach, you feel that when they got playmakers on the other side, you <laughs> you're just playing with fire. It's just a matter of time. It really is. Clock continues to run. Describe coming up on five minutes. I look for Salcedo to get the ball again. Because this is pick six territory here. Salcedo with the ball. And he gets another yard or two. Two yards and a cloud of rubber. And a uh, cloud of rubber, exactly. Yep. Well, you're in four, you're definitely in four down territory here. You're not gonna kick a field goal, you're gonna. Now uh, who's calling timeout? The officials? Injury timeout. We've got oh. a guy down for orange. Yep. And that'll stop the clock. I think. Uh, Norbalinda was hoping they could take it down almost six and a half before the next snap. He's up. That's good to see, man. You hate to see anybody go down. Uh, every time somebody goes down, I hope it's just a cramp. That's Arduan Morris. Just a cramp is what you hope. right now finally hit 80 El Ficky again is that a second touchdown of the night no they they stopped him they on stopped third him? and goal you know the only way this does help Yorba though is that it keeps the clock yeah, moving the clock's going man right. they've already burned half the half the quarter they're gonna go for it here on fourth and half a yard and they're gonna burn more clock doing it look at the up front, good defense. Yeah, really Just good. Great no, defense by the. Twisted him around. That ball never got across. By the Panther front line, man. Those guys have been taking a beat in the night, and they still have it though. They still have the will. Let's see if they could stop them here and get the ball turned over on downs. It's either Elficky or Salcedo getting this ball. Elficky got it. Ooh. And did he and get he it? Yes, he did. Touchdown, your Belinda. 28-7, they'll try to add the extra point. And look at the time on the game clock, 542. That's how much they chewed up this third quarter already. Six minutes and 18 seconds on that drive. Well, Alfiki with his second of the night.
Kick is up and the kick is good. Time out on the field with 5.42 left here in the third quarter of play. It's 29 at 7. Yorba Linda. Orange will get the ball back. And we'll see what type of urgency they play with on, the, on offense now. Here's the touchdown. Again, I'll think yourself, see the one of them are going to get it. And, and like you said earlier, Bob Belfick, he deserved it. He did a lot of blocking yeah. tonight, pushing people out. Always fun to see that fullback get a chance to get in the end zone. Fullback position's a dying breed anymore, it is. just like the running back yeah. in, in a way. In high school, it hasn't died, but it, it, the fullback position's been getting little by little eroded away. Almost eliminated professional football. Yeah. All Stott was the last anymore. good, was like the last good fullback. You just don't see that breed of guy anymore. Nope. All right, flag tees it up, get ready to kick off. Boykin is back with Wise. They're standing at the seven yard line, and that's the he pushes it. I know. Flag kicked that out of the end zone. He just chooses not to. He just kicks it high, short. You really want to give one of these guys a chance to return the football? He has been, but again, look how high his ball. Look, look at the arc he gets on the ball when he kicks it. Let's see if it happens this time. And it's end over end. And we got Wise with it. Wise trying to make some something happen, and he does. Gets to the outside. He cuts back to the near side. And Brought down at the 40-yard line. Boy, one guy to break, I'm talking one guy about. to beat. If you're telling me this kid can put it in the end zone and he's not doing it, I don't know why. Wow. Central wise, man. One. So they stepped out of that tackle, man. That's gone. Watch his cut back here. And he's got a chance right here. Nice cut. Salcedo gets him yeah, from behind. Yeah, Salcedo's the one that comes back and makes the tackle. Got you know he likes, to, Salcedo likes to put the hurt on people when he gets a chance, man. He gets, he gets people beating him up all day and all these games. You know, he likes to put put the hurt on him. Look at the floating scoreboard, Bob. That thing is just hanging <laughs> in space out there. Out Nothing in nowhere field. Look at that. He's just floating. Isn't that awesome? What a great job they did here. Good look at this renovated Fred Kelly Stadium. I don't know what's taking so long to get the action going again, but uh, they finally have. Finally got everything situated. Move the ball back half an inch. <laughs> Spot up. Might just be. Is that Boykin with the carry? Yeah, it was. Number two. Gets a six-yard carry out to the 45. Kobe Boykin. Got to get him going. Yep, second and four. You really I, I would give him, him the ball every time just to get it, just to get his rhythm back, get him going. Can't stop him forever. Again, Oscar Rios hands the ball off. Boykin stretching it out, trying to look for that first down, run out of bounds, a yard shy of a first down, maybe a half yard shy. Bring up third down. Call it a half yard. That's the point, right? It, only, it doesn't take much for him to get going. They give the boy can again. He's got the first down. He's got more. He's still working his way across. The 50 down to the 45-yard line, first down. So Orange on the move. They're not wasting any time. Kobe running with a little extra purpose out here right now. Maybe a little ticked off out there, huh? A little yeah. angry. Doesn't Any like the way that first half went. Didn't definitely didn't like the way that uh, that opening drive went there in the here Look, in this third quarter. You heard him talk. He's a serious athlete. He's not messing around out here. He needs carries. Let's see what happens. Beat him again. Rios again. Gives the Boykin. Boykin gets pushed back in the backfield. He's going to have to run out of bounds. Good defense again. Boy, they had everybody over there. Good pursuit. 
that time. Your Belinda had this one bottled up right from the start. Nowhere to go. He lost a ton of yards on that play. Right there. Once the momentum gets stopped right off the bat like that, then all his buddies can come and really just fill up those gaps. No chance for Kobe wow. to get eight, anything there. Eight-yard loss on the play. They got to throw the ball here. Second 18. They got to let it fly. Rios throws it out. Wise with it. Wise gets it across midfield. Wise still on his feet. feet. I didn't hear a whistle. Maybe they stopped in progress. I don't know. I'm guessing they did. You're right. I didn't hear a whistle either. That was a wise move by Wise to go to the end zone, right? Keep going, man. If Heck you don't yeah. hear a whistle, keep going. So the ball's at the 42 now. It'd be third down, seven, 11 yard pickup on that play. So we can see what happened in there. Here it is, Bob, the run again. Hey, he never. Yeah, I don't know he, if his knee ever went down. His knee never went down. But I think they stopped as far as progress right there. That's what they can. That's what they can lay on. Say, hey, look, he was stopped. Now what do we got here? But, we got uh, offs. We got uh, offsides by the defense. Yeah. Now it's third down. Third down. What two? We're gonna have a look at that wise run here in just a second. Play action to Boykin. Rios goes down, sack. Brought down. Good. Uh, that's El Ficky making yeah, the tackle, but that was good penetration that time by your Belinda. Ali El Ficky. Fullback, defensive lineman. All over the place. He returns punts in practice. See, he didn't go down. He rolled off, but I think they called him stop right, right there. They're going to say momentum was stopped. But hey, he had the presence of mind to keep it going because I still didn't hear what's Rios looking. He has a lane. He's going to go for it. Can he get to the first down? He did. He got there. Nice play. For, for a young man, that's pretty good. <laughs> And I'll tell you, he had a couple of receivers open downfield, but I don't think he had a chance to see him. He got under pressure and then just wisely packed it in, came to the near side of the field here. Cool, calm, and collected for a ninth grader. He picks up the first down and keeps his drive alive for the Panthers. Hey, Bob, I love to have a mascot in the stands. I see that Mustang head over there. <laughs> That's a good-looking mascot right there. They give the Boykin. He's Not brought much. down. Not much there for him. So Orange are going to move back five yards. Be second and 14 now. Clock is running. 2.50 left here in the third quarter play. 29-7, your Berlinda over Orange. Rios, the freshman, in the shotgun. Has some time. Looks. Passes batted away. Ooh. And it falls incomplete. So I'll bring up third down, 14. Hey, three on, three out. Well, he had a receiver open right, running a post pattern that was just open right down the seam there. And that pass just tipped. And that was up for grabs. Hey, hey, hey. 
or is likely to have that fall to the turf. A couple of guys out there with some flag yellow shoes. And every you know, time, I was thinking that earlier. Every time I look out there, I think there's a flag on the field, and it's not. It's somebody's shoes. There's Boykin, and he's bouncing around inside like a pinball. Just about everybody up front got a hit on him. He's still bouncing, trying to get some yards. It's not happening right now. Fourth down. Can't say the effort wasn't there this time around by Orange, Bob. No, for sure, right? I mean, they're Orange is Orange is battling. We heard it from John and Dan at halftime. You know, there's there's no quit in this Orange team. They're going to keep battling and battling. They're going for it on fourth and twelve from their. They should the 33 yard line. Rios is looking. Rios is going to be brought down. Nice tackle made. That was number 76, John Silvestri. And Silvestri. That is a coverage sack. Gets it back over on downs. That is a big time coverage sack. Nobody open, nobody open. Give Rios credit, man. Look at him. He's buying time. He, boy, he's trying to hang on to the bitter end, man, and then just finally takes the sack. You know, it's easy to say, oh, he should have taken off earlier, but I, I don't blame this kid at all, right? He was trying to hang in and make a play. Knows he needs to make a play with his arm. But uh, the coverage downfield just excellent by your Belinda and the turnover on downs. First and 10, Salcedo in the backfield. Bill in the center. They give to Salcedo. Runs off tackle. Moves the pile. Nice game, first down. Did he gain nine on that? Yes, he did. He's second and one. And if you thought they wanted to chew clock on the last possession. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna I'll throw the ball you. much here right now. They got 131 left here in the third quarter of play. They're in command. Sauce checks out. They continue to keep it on the ground. Ooh. Nice run there by Jason Escobar, the junior. Big chunks of yardage now. They can continue to move the ball like this on the ground. Uh, maybe Salcedo will get some rest. He's played a pretty good game today. I don't think anybody can argue that. It's been steady. There's Escobar again, just running hard. He's got fresh legs. So he can do some damage here. The give goes to Escobar again. This time he's trying to break a little bit to the outside. Gets stopped at the 35-yard line. Making the stop, Jalen Lightfoot, number three for Orange. And it's like number 13's... I think he's a defensive end out there for Orange. He's got his hands on his hip. He's limping a little bit. He's not going to come out, though. Angelo Adetoye. Ah, the minute the play comes out, boy, he does snap right back into attention, right. doesn't he? Nice job. <laughs> little play action. Bill rolling out. Bill going to keep. And Bill slides across the 30-yard line for the first down, first and 10. And that's going to be the last play here of the third quarter. Once they spot the ball for the first down, they will run the clock, and that's going to do it here for three quarters of play. 29-7, the Mustangs lead the Orange Panthers. 29-7. Well, what an impressive performance by York Belinda here tonight. You know what's funny about football anymore, Bob? There's no more gun to end the half. Right? Or end the quarter. I mean, <laughs> you talk about <laughs> taking things a little too far. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know? You don't have the There's gun not even anymore. a barrel on the gun. It's it's closed. You know, it's a cap gun. But uh, they've taken that out, so we don't have a gun sound. We ought to get like a hockey horn or something, something out here, right? right? Air, air horn, horn right? Man. Everybody's walking around not knowing what's going on. 
So come down to the final 12 minutes. Trevor Linda comfortably in the lead over Orange. And I did not think for a minute, Bob, that this game would be like this tonight. No, I don't think anybody did, right? I think it would be up in the 40s again right now. We were expecting another offensive shootout here tonight. We didn't get that. Well, they because both, the defense of your Belinda has just completely shut down this orange offense. The potential's there. And I think what this shows you, this shows you that your Belinda is really for real this year. So they can play defense like this with the offense they have. I mean, especially as they get in the league, right? Because uh, right. it's good. It's a tough league for your Belinda. They're gonna have to face Esperanza, Villa Park, Foothills. Got a great team. Is that that Crespi league, Crespi league. Yep, that league is gonna be oh, something best. else for uh, for somebody to win over there. And your Belinda won that league a year ago. Hey, Salcedo's in the backfield now to start the fourth quarter. They stopped the clock for a reason. All right. Now they call it back in. I don't know what happened. Here we go. Ball at the 31-yard line. Salcedo with it. And Salcedo running hard still. First down. Crosses the 20-yard line. Now, the good news for Orange is they do get La Habra next week. Always a tough game. That's but, not uh, good news. Uh, La Habra's always a tough team, no matter what. They're down a little bit this year. They're 0-2, but, you know, they play a good schedule. La Habra always plays a tough schedule to start things. But o o Orange gets to play in that Orange Coast League. Saddleback, Calvary Chapel, Estancia, Costa Mesa. So Orange should be in good shape once they get to the league. First and ten, ball to 20. Bill again, hands off to Salcedo. Salcedo slips the tackle, still goes forward, and still makes something out of it. He only three yards on the play. Clock's running. Watch 66. Oh, I've got him. Darn it. I don't have him. <laughs> Almost had the tackle for loss in the backfield there. Couldn't quite wrap him up. Yorberland again taking their time. Bill under center. It's number 33 Escobar on the carry. Jaden Moore comes up to trip him up. Third down, say four at the 14. Garbalina just continuing to run the ball here in the second half. Clock continues to run. We'll be under 10 minutes here in just a second. Wow. Escobar, touchdown. Yorbalinda. Jason Escobar gets in. And they're spreading the wealth now for your Belinda. The running backs are just doing a great job tonight. Well, I could have run through that hole. You would have limped through that hole, but you would have got through. I agree. But I would have got through. No doubt. Extra point coming up. Flag to kick. J.J. Conrad to hold. Again, the, the hold was up a little bit. Flat, but the Conrad made it up enough for Flag to kick the extra point. Timeout on the field. 9.51 left here in the ball game. It's 36 7, your Belinda. Well, the, the back and forth exciting game we got a year ago did not come to fruition Today. again here in 2022. But uh, nonetheless, if you're a fan of the Orville and the Mustangs, man, you got to be happy. They come on the road out here to Fred Kelly Stadium in the city of Orange, and they're going to come away with a big victory here. I see talent everywhere out here on both sides Tons of the bus. I see a lot of young talent. 
you know, Orange's field generals are freshmen and sophomores right now, you know. Uh, Jet White's a sophomore. You're right. And Boykins is a junior. This team everybody, next year. Right. Everybody for Orange who's a playmaker is an underclassman. Should really be a cohesive You're unit. Because right. all these youngsters have been, been playing together. Boykin will be a senior next year. Jet White will be a junior. Right. Another year. Mm -hmm. And the quarterbacks, both are young. Very, very young. But they can play. That's just it. They play. Flag getting ready to kick it off. Flag kicks it deep. Ooh, goes boy. in the end zone. Out nope, of bounds, out actually. Down. So that'll be a flag. And they'll bring it out to, what, the 35 and a 40-yard line. Be first and 10 for Orange. They won't kick it again. So let's see what they do here, what Orange does. Not dead yet. Still time. Well, you got to get a quick score here. I mean, first things yeah. first. You can't. Can't have any long. No, they need to break one off right. right now and score a touchdown on the first play. That, that would help. They got the guy to do it. No, they do. Rios gives the Boykin. Boykin's looking for somewhere to go. And he crosses the 40. That about the 42. Nice gain. About eight yards. Second and two. Rios looks to throw. Has it complete over the middle to Boykin. Boykin's trying to stretch the field. Trying to turn it up. He does. Nice gain, and he runs out of bounds. There it is, man. That shows you right there yeah. what he can do. He's entertaining, man. This kid is entertaining. They just got to get him some space in the open field, and it's, it, it's ridiculous what he can do. You can see why the University of Utah is licking their chops in a couple years. Get this kid over there and see what he can do at the collegiate level. First and ten. Ball at the 40. Pass complete again. Didn't get the number on that one. Looks like it's uh, Smith. Smith with the reception. About six yard gain. Let's call it second and four. Two, three plays here, Bob. Within a minute, they're already downfield. They need to get it in the end zone now. Yep. Rios again in the pocket. Nice throw. He has a good throw. He has a nice arc on that ball. Nice spiral. I'll tell you, when he gets a chance to set his feet, right, get into a throw. It, they're good-looking throws. You know, he, he really does have confidence in his offensive line because he doesn't get the happy feet. He's not dancing back there. He sets his feet. He's looking. He's got, you know, he's trusting his linemen. It's what you should do. And that's really uncanny uh, for a freshman quarterback. Very, very uncanny. Yeah, you just don't see it very often no, for a ninth grader. You not at all. Oscar Rios. Looking again, looking, throws, incomplete, intended for Boykin. Just trying to get that little underneath. There was nothing on it. For, for Kobe, right. Yeah, but there was nothing on it, so went for not on that one. Even though it's a short pass, you, you do got to put a little bit of zip on it. Not a lot, but enough. Because Boykin's dealing with everybody closing in on him. Rios, big fourth down, fourth and four. Boykin in motion. They're coming on the blitz. Incomplete. Pass is incomplete over the middle. Your Belinda will take over on downs. Pass was intended for number seven, Jacob Coleman. 
Bowman just could not hang on to that catch or that pass. So Norwood brought the pressure that time. He forced a quick throw. Well, there's 8-18 left here in the ballgame. 36-7, Yorba comfortably with the lead, and I'm sure we'll just see run, run, run here and try to burn this clock and get out with a win. Look at that last attempt for Orange. It's just been that kind of a night for Orange. Just, just a, a lot of things have just been just out of their grasp. So close to making some big plays, and it just wasn't there tonight for the Panthers. Here we go. It gives straight up. First back through. And I don't think we're going to see Saucedo anymore this game. That's Dallas Caceres, I believe, number 13 on that carry. Yeah, so I'm sure we're going to see a lot of second stringers now. Well, this is, when they, this is when they should be playing, Bob, because they're going to be in charge next year. Yep. Without a doubt. And then you never know when you might need one of these kids this year. Yep. You never know when you're right. going to ask a kid to step up. Second and one. To give again to Caceres. I don't know if he got the first down or not. Going to be close. Sure looks like he got it. It's the spot. It does look like he did get it, but they're not signaling to move the chains. Now they are. Okay. Clock continues to run here. Got a new quarterback, Holden Nagin, just checking into the ball game. It's wearing number 19, under center. They give to Caceres once again. And you can hear the hoops and the hollers from this Yorba Linda sideline. They love seeing those second street kids get in there and do something. They know those are the kids playing their their tails off in practice. And when they get their opportunity, they love to see them get in there. Good pickup, second and five. So Holden Nagin. Sophomore, 6'1", 165. He's the quarterback right now. Looks like Caceres again gets the ball on the carry. Uh-oh, loose ball. Fumble. Orange thinks they have it. They do. Who oh, got it? Nobody's signaling him. I, I know. Nobody's said anything. Orange jumped on. Now we get the white hat says right. orange football. Hey, look, he's just making sure he's got it right. You know, last thing he wants to do is get it wrong because he knows we'll rip on him. Well, or you know? Orange pick, orange dove on the football, picked it up. They were waving it around. All right, so orange with the ball. The, or do they have it? Yeah, they do. They should have it. First right. down. Finally made the call. Bob, these calls have been coming slow. They're a little They've slow. Been taking tonight. their time, man. They're a little slow. Let's see here. Let's see who causes the fumble. There goes Kutseris with it. And boy, just a big pile. And oh, there's a loose football. <laughs> right, let's see what happens. Let's see if Orange can at least go down and get back on the scoreboard here. Rios looking, steps up, has to run away from the pressure, still on his feet, gets down to the 41. Pretty good little game there, all things considered. Well, the coverage by your Belinda tonight has just been spectacular. There's been time to throw the football. There's just been nobody open downfield. Getting set. Rios looking to pass again. Dumps it off to Boykin. Boykin going forward. Look at Boykin. Nice gain. He's still on his feet. Gets it down inside the 30 to the 26. Two 
Good run after the catch on this one by Boykin. Just yeah. a quick little dump off, and he's gone. Orgy did more of this tonight. We just didn't get to see enough of that from Kobe Boykin tonight. Bar receivers out wide, obviously passing. Rios looking, looking, <clears throat> has plenty of time. Still looking to throw. And he lost the football, oh. and your Belinda picks it up. You know, that's the kind of play you've got to throw away in the future. And, uh... Well, we talked about it, a young down. quarterback, right? He'll yeah. learn from that. Yeah, he's trying to make a play. I don't right. blame him. I'm, no, you know, I mean, it's right. The score's out of hand already. He wants to make a play, get his team back in the in the end zone. Yeah, hey, you can't tell your to stop playing. They're going to play. Some of these guys out there don't get to play a whole lot. But you got to you got to keep in mind ball security here, right? I mean, all the time in the world to throw the football. Again, the coverage downfield is just crazy good. Nowhere to go. No, he's just standing back there looking for somebody to get open. And then he just drops the football. So tough break right there for the freshman quarterback and for the Panthers. But it's just been that kind of a night. Again, Caceres with the football, the running back. Playing it safe right up the middle. So Dallas Cazares could be the future running back of this team next year. He runs pretty good. He runs hard. I don't doubt it at all. Yeah, get these reps now. Clear up, clean up these little fumbles here and there, stuff like that. You're ready to go. That's why you play now. Here we go. Second and six. 418 to play. Cazares again, running up the middle. Pretty much a penalty-free second half, too. We haven't seen yeah, the flags done, down at all here. Yeah, both teams have done pretty well today. Making a tackle was linebacker Victor Salazar on that play. Holden again, the quarterback again, gives the Caceres on first down. He runs, gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a half yard. Bring up second down. And the whole goal right here is just to kill the clock. Get out of here with the win. Get your underclassmen a little bit of work. Get ready for next week. Both got big games next week as well. Indeed they do. After this one, your Belinda has San Juan Hills. Next Friday night. That'd be a good one. And as we mentioned before, Orange will travel to play La Habra. La Habra with the new stadium as well. Everybody get a new stadium. About time for some of these schools. The Cyrus <laughs> oh, yeah. again. Yeah. Well, the Whitney Union High School District got two new stadiums. They have two new beautiful stadiums. They got elevators too, just like this one. Matter of fact, they look almost the same, except that one's a little bit bigger than this stadium. Goes up a little bit higher. It's like six or seven stories high. That's why they got that elevator, Bob. Yeah. Uh, they're fired up down there tonight. They, 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 were, they were ready for this one here tonight. Got to run the ball again. Just keep running. Cassaris again. Short gain. Bring up fourth down now. Probably have to punt. Oh, Bob, not quite the game we were looking for as we get a good look at the stars right there. Probably didn't think he'd get any carries today, but he'll probably out carry um, Sauce now because he's carrying every right. last three series. He's got the ball every time, and there he goes again. This time he broke one for a first down, and that was on fourth down and four. And your Belinda runs up the gut, gets the first down, and that should put this one away. There's 150 left on the first down. 
And it'll be first and 10. Ball is going to be at the 44 of Orange. So forget, your Belinda went 10 and 0 a year ago. Your Belinda could just take a knee twice in this game. Right, this game's over. And then they got that first round playoff matchup against Bishop Ahmad a year ago. I mean, welcome, welcome to the Division One playoffs, right? So the Yorba probably got moved up a little higher than maybe they should have. I know they were really looking forward to that, uh, challenging themselves against Ahmad last year. Came up short in that first round, but uh, I think this is a team that now is a little more battle tested. Not saying they're going to go 10-0. That's a tough one, especially if we talked about the league they're in. But uh, I'll tell you about this. is a tough team, team in the playoffs. This team has a lot of depth. There's they no really doubt do. about it. I mean, they have it. And that's what you need. It's, it, you can have the great a good front line, but you do need a little bit of depth to, you know, uh, play with the giants of the league, you know, and uh, of the southern section. And I think our Belinda has that depth. I don't see any two-way players here. Not very many. I think Conrad's one of the few. I know if we looked at, we might find another one, but uh, they don't need to have guys go both ways. And that should do it, Bob. This should do it here from uh, Fred Kelly Stadium on the campus of El Medina High. Yorba Linden commanded this ball game 36 to 7. I'd like to thank our sponsors once again for sponsoring tonight's game and getting it on and getting these kids seen and uh, help our scholarship foundation, which you can apply for. Get on prepsportsmedia.org and have a look around. Apply for scholarship if you're a senior athlete. That'll do it. It's going to do it, Bob. Again, not quite the game we thought we would have, but, no. you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you don't get what you want. <laughs> or what you think you might get. Not, not the 50-43 to 43 barn burner we had a year ago. Not sure. at all. And the line of the congratulatory handshake for... The Yorba Linda Mustangs given by Orange and a good good ball game overall. I mean Nobody got hurt and they Get to play another week Bob. Yep. They'll both move on as we mentioned uh, bigger things in store for both of these schools But uh, tonight definitely Belonging to the Yorba Linda Mustangs. They remain undefeated on the season 3-0 and orange will drop to 1 and 2 But uh, throw that record kind of out the window. They've uh, they played some good teams early on and uh, like I said, they're getting ready for that uh, that league campaign just a couple of weeks away. Here's a look at the stuff early on. There was the early interception. Uh, that kind of set the tone defensively for your Belinda. It was just a tough night for Orange. They just couldn't get anything going yeah, on they, offense. They just never got just never got on track, Bob. That's all it was. There was another opportunity for Orange right there. They had the turnover right then, but uh, couldn't cash that one in in the first half. The hype, hype looked good tonight. I tell you, hype's a playmaker. He's gonna have some good, good games for Orange down the line, but tonight just wasn't that night. Big game on the ground. Sauce got in the end zone. Of course, El Fiki, the big fullback, got a couple of touchdown runs tonight. And uh, it was just all your Belinda. Absolutely. Tonight. All right, let's go down to the field with John Conti and. Um, uh, Dan DeForest. Hey guys, I, I think you really said it all. I mean, obviously this was not the game that we saw last year. Definitely a lot more defense. Yorba Linda did such a great job just bottling up Kobe Boykin, and that was pretty much the, the tale of the whole day. I agree. Yeah, they were really uh, shedding their blockers, just staying at home, making sure he couldn't get any big plays, get past the uh, you know line of scrimmage. He was really having a hard time breaking free. Yeah, and then on the other side of the ball, we have Rich's famous line four yards and a, a cloud of rubber because that's what's going on here four yards and a cloud of rubber five yards and a cloud of rubber six yards and a cloud of rubber all day long for your Belinda and they just really outmatched Orange High School today so that's all we got down here don't forget to join us next week at Rock and Brew Prep Sports Media coming out West High School in the house great coach Dan Davidson will be there live with us so that's all we got from the field back to you Rich and Bob John and Dan, and uh, they're hit on the head, Bob. It's not quite what we we thought we would see, right. but uh, it is what it is. Like again, once again, thank our sponsors for tonight's ball game. Let's have a look, and we'll see the Forest Realty lead it off, and uh, Lighthouse Escrow doing a great job. Level up, man. If you're under a ten, you need to go there and get up. Modern Woodman, 
some of the good people from there tonight. You saw him, and of course, Reem Tankless, Joe Shippy, giving us a hand out here. Rock and Brew, and that's where we go live every Wednesday night. As Bob just mentioned, we'll be there this Wednesday. That's from uh, six to eight, and of course, Suzuki, uh, one of our sponsors. So, on behalf of Bob Gibson, John Conti, Dan DeForest, I'm Richard Strassen. So long for your friends here, Fred Kelly State, where once again, the Yorberlanda Mustangs defeat Orange 36 to 7. Good night, everybody. County is the nation's largest municipal government. Led by our Board of Supervisors, we have more than 100,000 employees at your service. Sometimes you see us in action, fighting a fire, performing an ocean rescue, providing vaccinations, picking up a stray dog, or helping to check out a library book. And sometimes our services are only visible to those who receive them, like benefits that keep food on the table or mental health care that calms a crisis. Whether high-profile or low-key, county 